Okay. We're going to have just a little bit of a talk about the, the church and where we're at. And Nancy wanted to send along her great thanks for all the cards and all the sweet thoughts and the phone calls and texts and every way that people have reached out and all the tributes that have been posted on Facebook. Uh, it's just been a real blessing for her. Uh, she's still struggling, uh, like any of us would. And, uh, I just ask you to keep her in prayer and, uh, continue to lift that family up as they, they deal with the loss of brother Bill. Um, we've, we've got a long way to go, uh, to get, to get to the other side of this. And today, um, I talked to a few people Sunday, uh, about the possibility of a, a interim uh, coming and getting some thoughts together on that. And what I wanted us to do as a church is to enter a time of a season of prayer. Um, we're, we're probably not going to do start a search committee uh, until the first of the year. Um, just I think we need to bathe that committee, whoever that is. We haven't even met to talk about it or anything yet. But obviously we will, and I just wanted the church to start a time of prayer to pray for the man that God has for Union Hill Baptist Church. He's out there, and it's just a matter of time before we find him. Uh, and so I think the appropriate thing to do at this time is for the church to enter a season of prayer. And so I wanted to um, take some time tonight and talk about prayer, talk about our commitment to prayer, um, talk about the needs of the church a little bit and, and what we need to be about doing. Uh, we've got to continue moving forward. Now, we're in a very unusual period of time. Uh, the, I've, this, this is just really odd, really strange. And our church has had some really difficult days. And, um, you know, with God's faithfulness and your faithfulness, and we're going to get through it, there will be a brighter day. Uh, for the church, and I have just been so encouraged uh, to see the number of people who are coming, the number of uh, Sunday school classes that are still going, uh, and having good attendance now. And so we still want to be very careful, and I'm still personally going up and fogging uh, all of the Sunday school classes, all of the youth area, all the nursery area, all the children's area. Uh, every place that people meet in the church, I'm making sure that it is, is clean and it is sanitized. So you can have that assurance. Now, if you're in a high-risk category, you know, you've got to really think about whether you want to get in a large group or not. The church has kind of grown now back to a point. I think we had 130 uh, Sunday. And you need to, you know, you need to take care of yourself. You need to protect yourself. And I, I would not even, if you're in a high, higher age group, uh, I would make sure I had a mask on, you know, most all the time because it uh, it's important that we protect ourselves when we're there. Um, so we just don't need anybody else to get sick in our church. And so I had a few things that I wanted to kind of talk about uh, tonight on the on the prayer prayer time that we're going to have, and you know, I want to talk about Keith uh, and his struggle that he has. Uh, God has provided us another uh, person to be our custodian or maintenance or whatever you want to call him, and Joe Franklin. Um, Joe is, was in the military for 25 years, and then he was on the uh, Sheriff's Department for 20 years and has just recently retired. And so he's agreed to come in and work uh, at the church and do some of the things that Keith was doing for a while to see if he likes that or if that's something he wants to do. So it was just uh, really a God thing that that uh, was provided for the church so that uh, we have somebody there doing some things and making sure things are taken care of. So I wanted you to ask you to continue to pray for Keith as he is working with his, uh, his disease that he has right now, his cancer. And, and then also pray for Joe, that Joe will be able to get things done at the church and, and uh, find his way around. And if you, have, you see something that needs to be fixed that you can let me know or let uh, one of the staff know, uh, let somebody in leadership, Ronnie Jackson, know he's chairman of the Building and Grounds Committee. Let somebody know that there's something that needs to be done, and we'll try to get it done. Um, there's just a lot going on, uh, and so 
I just ask for everybody to be patient, just to be kind in the way that we treat other people, uh, to can continue to lift other people up in prayer, and uh, just know that uh, each of us has a ministry to perform, and that can be an encouragement, that can be um, work at the church, you can come up and do some things, maybe find out from Joe what, what you could help get done. I don't think we're going to try to tackle any painting jobs right now. Uh, we may try to do a few projects that are kind of on the list. Um, maybe uh, just a few things that need to get, that might improve the situation when we do get back going full time uh, with everybody there. So just be thinking about that and think about the things that uh, maybe you can do to encourage your neighbors, uh, encourage the people around you, uh, your family members. Um, pray for the people in the church who are trying to lead the church. Um, uh, and just just understand that there's a lot going on and that uh, everybody's trying to do everything that they can to build the church up and to keep things going in, in our time of loss for our pastor. Uh, it is a, just a, such a difficult time um, to deal with. You know, emotions go up and emotions go down. And uh, I tell you, when, when they come up, it's difficult not to express those emotions. And sometimes we, we need to just have a kind word and don't respond in a way that maybe our, our nature would have us respond, but, in, in, but respond in a way that uh, is a godly way. So I'm going to pray right now. We have a lot of people. I know Karen Stewart, we're still waiting on her stem cells to find their home and find the right place for them to be. Uh, Stephen's been coming back now and, and says that, you know, she's doing okay, uh, but we're still kind of being very patient and praying for those stem cells to find their home and do the work that they need to do. Uh, continue to pray for Keith Dempsey, and we have so many more uh, in our church that are uh, having little things done and some major things done, but we're, we're doing good as a church, and so I'm really encouraged where we're at. So, uh, just pray for the music ministry. Uh, we, you can see we've got a lot of people coming up doing singing, um, and that's a blessing, but we also need to be careful with that too because that seems to be one of the places where people get COVID is when they're putting out a lot, and we've got these new masks. We all feel like we look like ducks, which is okay, uh, but uh, it's... Uh, it's a ministry, I think, that will encourage the church, and I think it's important that we try to do it, but we also need to make sure that we do everything that we can to be safe, uh, to keep uh, the older folks in the choir safe, and uh, just, just be as cautious as we can, but also try to be an encouragement and lead in worship. So I think that's been great. I think that's something that we will continue, uh, and we've got some announcements that will be made about how we're going to do Christmas this year. Uh, we might need some help putting up some lights. We are going to do that for the community and, and try to spread the joy that we have. So I'm going to pray just for a few minutes, and then we'll we'll do our lesson for tonight. And then uh, as we do that, I, uh, we'll just talk about prayer a little bit and how to, how to get into the prayer time and uh, the things that we need to pray for. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, for this evening, I just want to lift up the name of Jesus. This world so desperately needs Jesus in their life. Uh, I've never been in a time uh, where I've seen the, the turmoil and the dissension and uh, different people at each other in so many different parts of the country. I'm thankful that I live where I do, where we do get along with everybody and that we respect other people and that we try to understand other people and that we pray for other people. and. So I just want to lift uh, lift our country up to you, lift our leadership up to you, lift these elections up to you that we have coming. Lord, we always know that you're in control, but we have things that we need to do to be part of that. And uh, you've given us your word to show us the right things to do. And it's more than just thinking about the things to do, but we need to do the things that you've given us to do. So I just want to lift all the people up that's on our hearts and our minds, especially the Barnett family and especially the Stewart family and Keith Dempsey and so many more. I know Morgan uh, uh, Brown is going in for some tonsil 
a surgery tomorrow morning and we pray for her and uh, there's so many more on our prayer list and you know each one you know each person intimately and you know every hair on their head and so I just ask that you'll touch them in a special way um, we've got older folks in our church that are isolated and they're not being able to have visitors or family members come by or if they have family they can't have their friends come by and it's discouraging for a lot of older folks who don't understand. So many people in nursing homes, Lord, that, that just can't have their family around them like they used to. And uh, sometimes they just don't understand what's going on. Maybe they think people have fell out of love with them and they don't care. Help them to feel your love in their life. Help them to understand the different things that are going on in this world right now and that they can have a peace and a patience and a presence with you at any time. And Lord, you be their friend, you be their comfort, and you be by their side. And and uh, we just we just want to lift all of this up to you today. Uh, we have uh, our staff members that need praying for. Uh, Susan's been at the church, you know, for for 19 years, 20 years, and uh, been a very close confidant and worker with Bill in so many different situations and. You know, we don't think about the people that like that. Maybe Pauline that's worked at the church and Susan that's worked at our church. And they're missing Brother Bill just like everybody else is. But they worked a lot closer, you know, in those situations than, than maybe a lot of us did. So I just want to lift our entire church family up to you. And I just pray that in every situation, that whatever it is, uh, in health or in wellness or in wealth or poverty, any situation that we find the joy and that we give you all the praise and all the glory for everything that is said and done. And we will continue to be faithful to your word and to the calling that you've given us. So in all these things that we want to lift up to you, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read you an article from the Alabama Baptist and it's, I'm going to abbreviate some of it. But I've been to Enterprise, Alabama, and there is a very strange-looking uh, statue in the middle of the town square of a boll weevil. And that boll weevil produced a massive change in that community. And the reason they built a statue to it is because it came in and it wiped out all the cotton. And you'd think, well, now that's an odd thing to do to build a statue to a boll weevil when it hurt all the crops that everybody had growing in that time. However, there was a businessman in that community that said, hey, maybe we need to look at making a change. You know, maybe this is God's way of saying we need to change something because this boll weevil is here and it's wiping out our crops. And so what he did is an area businessman saw that an opportunity, saw this, saw the uh, peanut farmers as an opportunity. And he said a local farmer to convert his farm, he got a local farmer to convert his farm to peanut, peanut farming. The first year, this change paid off the farmer's debts and ultimately led to a great prosperity for the Enterprise area farmers. Today, if you travel to Enterprise area, you will see large fields of both cotton and peanuts. It took a disaster to cause the farmers to change and to diversify. Well, in, in that vein, I think that's what this uh, article is trying to get at. Uh, are we looking at this pandemic in a way that maybe we need to change some of the things that we're doing in order to reach more people for Christ. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, I wonder what God's trying to teach us. I wonder what he's trying to tell us. Uh, you know, well, this is a, maybe something that we need to think about and that this might be the change that we need to take place. So it says, this begs the question, is it possible that God is attempting to get his people and his church to make some changes through our current COVID-19 pandemic? Most of us don't like change. In my opinion, the single most prominent reason we see so many churches having to close is the inability or unwillingness to change. The Bible is replete with examples of God bringing pandemics floods, and other natural disasters upon his people to change their direction. I believe we would do well to quit looking at media, politicians, and others to place blame, and instead let us begin to look to God and ask, how do you want me or us to change? 
Had the good people of Enterprise rejected a businessman's suggestion to diversify, they might not exist today, or they could be another small town or small church, if you put it in that context, that is slowly drying up, which there are thousands of those around the country. If we, the people of God, are not willing to look inward and seek the face of God, asking how we might change, pray, ask God how we might change, we too could see churches closing and our effectiveness continue to diminish. I have been a Christ follower for over 40 years now, and I had often heard the statement, the message never changes, but the methods must change. We are in a crisis in our country, and we, the people of God, have the only hope for a nation, and that's Jesus, and that's true. And there was a whole host of people, including some of our church members who went to Washington to stand for that change, to say Jesus is the only way to try to build unity in our country and to say without Jesus, people are not going to be able to, to see the necessity for change. They've got to have a life-changing experience just like we have. And so the good news of Jesus Christ, the question is, are our current methods getting the gospel to the people that need it most? So uh, that's kind of that's kind of the article that I wanted to share with you. But I had I had some scripture verses that I also wanted to share. And then we'll uh, we'll talk about those just for a minute. But in Acts six, um, verse four, it says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to, to the ministry of the word. Now, if, we're gonna, if we are going to, at some point, select a search committee to look for the man of God that, ha that he has for us, I think we need to continually be in prayer. We need to be thinking about that. Um, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the Word teaches us that there are things that we need to do, not just talk about, but things that we need to do in order to affect that kind of change in people's lives. I don't know unless they hear how they're going to make a change. And so the hearing is, is our responsibility. I think God can prepare their heart. I think He can do a lot of things. And through TV, media, us, uh, you know, tracks that get passed out, they need to hear the word of God and what it takes to make a change in their life. And that's, that's our job, that we are to go and make disciples of other people in other nations. And so that's our job. And we've got to be able to say we're part of that community, uh, that uh, we're willing to be the workers that God has chosen, that we need to fulfill the Great Commission and go out and do his work, do his ministry. It's not just enough to stand... Uh, in the pulpit and preach the gospel, I think you have to put feet to that, that what you stand for and what you say people ought to do that you need to do. It's not just enough to stand in the choir loft and sing songs about what you think other people ought to do. You've got to get out and go do it. And so I think that's what, uh, that's what we're called to do, and I think that's part of the process. There are many talents and many uh, gifts that have been given to the church body to build up the church and for the edification of the Lord. Uh, but I just th really think that part of that is that we've got to be the feet and the hands and the mouth and the hearing that people need in order to be able to affect the change in their life. So we will give ourselves continually in prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so as, as they do that, uh, that, in Acts 6, they were trying to select new, new people to serve the elderly because the elderly in their congregation didn't feel like that they were getting it done. And a lot of the disciples didn't feel like they wanted to give up the ministry of the word in order to do the work. And so they chose other disciples. And so I think God has chosen us to do that work. We are to be about it supplying the needs of other people and as we meet those needs we get an opportunity to share the gospel with those people so as we turn over to Romans 12 I'm going to read uh, verses 9 through 21 and um, this is behave like a Christian it says love be without hypocrisy abhor what is evil cling to what is good be kindly, affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another. In other words, put the other person ahead of yourself. Give them preference. 
put yourself down and lift them up. Not lagging in diligence, in other words, working hard, fervent in spirit, having a great spirit about the hope that we have, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. I think we could uh, attest that we have had some trials in our church and our lives here recently, but we need to be patient with those. We don't need to... Um, be accusing other people of doing certain things or they're saying that they did this or they did that. We need to be patient in tribulation. It's an opportunity for us to practice patience and to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit, continuing steadfastly in prayer. And I think the more time we spend in prayer, the more that we will have patience. And if we can exhibit that patience with other people and lift them up and put them first, then this world's going to be a whole lot better place and a whole lot different place than it is today. Distributing to the needs of the saints and given to hospitality. Be kind, be gentle, be open-handed. I think as Daniel Edmund said, with the money that God has entrusted to us. Uh, bless those who persecute you and bless, and bless and do not curse. In other words, if somebody says something about you and, and, and they shouldn't have said that about you, don't curse them. Don't be angry at them. Just pray for them. Uh, just don't bless those who persecute you. You remember what God said about heaping coals on somebody's head when you treat them the way that they're not treating you. It, it really is the right way to do things. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. I think that's one of the one of the most difficult things I had to deal with in business is that other people were so confident that they knew everything about everything. And it really was frustrating at times because ultimately when they kind of exercised their plan, they was kind of obvious they knew very little about what they thought they knew a lot about. And so I think sometimes we need to just be patient and let those things work themselves out, and they'll find out for themselves that maybe they don't know everything that they think they know. So be of the same mind toward one another, and do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble people. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. And I think most of it depends on us. I think we can live peaceably with almost everybody because it does depend on us. We don't have to be angry with anybody. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So there's a lot of evil in this world going on right now, but I think the way that we as Christians need to overcome it is to do good. The more good that we can do, the better this world's going to be. So do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. So that's if we do good. That's in chapter 13. You will have praise from the Lord by doing good, but be humble about it. Treat others like you want to be treated. So uh, uh, over in Philippians uh, 4, 6, uh, it says over here, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And so uh, I think that's a good place to end right there on that note. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And I think as a church, uh, our request should be that God, you've got a man out there for our church. And it's going to be impossible for somebody, for you to have the same feeling about somebody that we had for Brother Bill. Brother Bill was with us for 26 years, 8 months, and 4 days. And he baptized over 600 people at Union Hill Baptist Church. He led the church through thick and thin, 
the church has grown and grown. We've had ups in growth and down in growth. Uh, but at this time, I think we're in pretty good shape. And uh, Brother Bill just, he was probably one of the most humble, probably one of the most diligent, probably the one of the most intentional uh, about sharing the gospel and about looking for ways to continually find new ways to present the gospel and look for ways to grow the church in every way possible. And so uh, it's going to be hard for anybody to come in and fill his shoes. And I don't think that's what we should look for. I think we should look for the man that God has to fill the, fill the church with what he has for us. And that may be a lot of change. We don't know what's coming. But uh, the, the person that comes in may look at, a, look at our church in a whole different light than what Brother Bill did. And that may be a great thing. That may be what he has for us. But I think we need to pray for the man that God has for the church and pray continually, pray without ceasing, and honestly and earnestly seek his face and just ask him to lead us in a, in a quick way to the man that God has. Uh, we want to be patient, but we also need a leader of the church. And um, so just pray about it. Just really spend some time in prayer. Uh, seeking that man and then as the different committees that you have elected to be the leaders of the church the deacons uh, the finance committees the personnel committee the house and grounds committees as these leaders uh, seek the kind of guidance that they need to seek and that they seek the right timing to start a search committee um, and and try to find the person that we need on an interim basis that I just ask you to pretty really uh, earnestly spend some time in prayer. Um, I, I'm, I just know that the man is there and that when he gets here, this is going to be an exciting experience for all of us. So I just pray that uh, you'll spend that time in prayer and that we'll spend maybe the next couple of months uh, in a season of prayer seeking the guidance that God has, uh, seeking the wisdom that he has, and seeking the people out on the search committee that need to be on it, and uh, preparing that man that he has for our church. Uh, he may not even know that that's, that's what his new job might be. We may not know at this point, uh, but I know God knows. And when he knows and he wants us to know, then those th two things will come together. So I thank you for this time that we've had together, and uh, it's been a it's been a season of struggle as far as grief goes, uh, but it's also a season of of looking forward and looking up. And I think if we will continually look up, this church is going to be fine, and it's going to continue to grow. So pray for the leadership of the church. Pray for the deacons. Uh, the deacons are going to be reaching out in a more positive. Uh, more systematic way to each member of this church and we're probably going to have some deacon elections coming up because we are short three short right now in deacons and that may be why you haven't gotten a phone call or a card or a text from your deacon but it, we are trying to contact and keep up with everything that's going on so we ask for your prayers also so i just want to give all that to you and uh, thank you for your time, and I'm going to close with a short prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray for all the things that we've talked about here tonight. Lord, we have such dedicated and faithful members in our church, and I just want to lift each one of those up to you. Lift up our church. Lift up Nancy and the family. And, Lord, we just pray for a comfort and a peace for her, knowing that Jesus is in control. He is still on the throne, and that all of these things will pass, and that we will be in a better place as we move forward. Nothing has taken you by surprise. Everybody that is in a place of leadership is in that place of leadership because you placed them there. And we want to lift all those people up to you today. Lord, I thank you for all the uh, commitment that has been given to the Barnett family, all the cards and meals and texts and letters and, and just love and outpouring of prayer that they have received. And they feel it, Lord. She is so thankful for all that the church has done. So I just want to lift all this stuff to you. We have decisions going forward, and we want to put you in charge of those decisions, and we continue to lean on you as we look for guidance and wisdom at Union Hill Baptist Church. In Jesus' precious name we pray, because he and you are so, so worthy. Thank you, and good night. In Jesus' name, amen.